96.7 KCAL rocks. It is Patrick in the morning, but it is time to do some sports with our guy, Pep. Pep, what's going on? Yo, Patrick, good morning. Good morning, everybody out there. Top of the morning to you as we get into March Madness later today. A full day of wall-to-wall -wall college basketball. And on Monday, Patrick, I promised you, I promised everyone out there, all the KCAL rockers, I would come up to my Final Four. So before I give it to you real quick... I just want to say a caveat here because I'm about to contradict myself. So the good teams in the NCAA tournament, even the really, really good ones, the top one seeds, the two seeds, they all have some bad losses. They've all, they've all had a point in the season where they didn't look that good. But with that said, I'm still picking the, some of the top seeds to make it to the Final Four. So I'm kind of contradicting yes. myself because, Patrick, you know this. It only takes one game. If you have one bad game, Patrick, you're out. That's it. God, that is the madness of it, dude. I mean, you can a really good team can get eliminated, unfortunately. Yeah, and it happens all the time. So with that said, here, I might contradict myself. I'm going to pick a bunch of good teams. Uh, here's my final four, and there's three number one seeds and a number two. So basically, uh, I'm copying out. Maybe I'm just mailing it in, picking the yes, easy baby. picks. <laughs> so I don't yes, know. do it. All right, so I'm going Alabama, Houston, Purdue, and I'm going to throw UCLA in there. I know they've got some key guys down with injuries, but I like the bracket that they're in. I like the side of the bracket they're in. Um, not a huge fan of the Kansas Jayhawks. I think Kansas is kind of watered down maybe a little bit this year. So that's my final four. Um, I, I hope the Bruins make it all the way, uh, but we'll see. But that's my final four because I, I feel like the number one seeds are playing good this time of the year. It would be different if there was a number one seed kind of stumbling into the big dance, but I don't feel that way. Boy, I am very close to your picks for sure. But I mean, I sound like a homer as well. I secretly, I want UCLA to do well so badly. So I think I picked a little bit of emotion. I mean, thank God they're a good team. I mean, they could definitely do some damage. They're even championship caliber, dare I say that. But we know how tough it is. And I, I want UCLA to make it to the final four. I am a believer in Alabama, even though Homeboy has that distraction, which yeah. can easily take this team down. He's the best player in the tournament, and he seems to act like it. I have UCLA, Alabama, Gonzaga, another picking from my heart, <laughs> yes. which could be very unwise, and then Houston, which is another yeah. favorite. So we're, we're very, very similar. And the thing, too, is like Gonzaga – I, I was like, oh, yeah, Gonzaga's going to totally make it. But, again, these good teams have bad losses. And, I, I, you know, it's it's hard because, again, it only takes one off night, one bad game, and you are bounced. You are out of the big dance. So th that's exactly. what makes me a little skeptical about Gonzaga this year. Absolutely, man. I picked with my heart on two of my <laughs> final four picks, which is insanity. But it might work. You know what I mean? Like usually if you – there's a there's a whole Seinfeld episode about George Costanza going against the grain. Whatever he thinks he should do, he does the opposite and it all works out. So part of me is like, I should have done the opposite. This is not going to work out. Go against what you think you should do. Yep, exactly. All right, so wall-to-wall -wall college basketball today. The, the NCAA tournament is going to be awesome today and tomorrow, which is basketball from morning till night. It's going to be awesome. Yeah. All right. Patrick, big NFL news coming out. It's not a done deal yet, but quarterback Aaron Rodgers, he went into his dark place, right? He went into the darkness, and he said he had, uh, what was that, like 90%, he was 90% sure that he was going to retire from football completely, but then he emerged from the darkness, and he's like, you know what? I have every intention to play for the New York Jets. Now, is he a member of the Jets as we're doing this interview? No, he's not. But he has every intention to play for the Jets. What do you make of that? I think he will eventually be on the Jets because, I mean, he. Uh, I heard that, you know, they've known for a while that him and the Packers are going to split. And I think that he has just learned to kind of enjoy to play with the media a little bit, especially Schefter. He's out to kind of make Rusini, Schefter, all those big talkers kind of look as bad as possible. I think he does eventually end up on the Jets because you can see him signing Lazard. You can see him, you know, looking at Randall Cobb, all those lists of players that he wants. I see him going to the Jets, but I also see him screwing with the media for quite a bit. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's his style, isn't yeah. it? Right, you know, he's he's yeah. kind of hard to read, and he says weird things and does weird things. But yeah, but 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 if he says he wants to play for the Jets, it it sounds like it's inevitable that the Packers and Jets are going to work out a trade. And it sounds like he even gave the Jets a wish list. Okay, if you really want me, 
I'll, I'll come there, but this is what I need to have in place before I commit to you guys. That's how bad he and wants then when it. You, and then when you see Lazard got signed, it's like, okay. Yeah. I mean, that's a pretty good indicator to me at least. Yeah, the writing's on the wall, looks like that. Aaron Rodgers will be the next quarterback of the Jets. And he wasn't the only big quarterback news. We had Jimmy G from the San Francisco 49ers. My guy, Jimmy G, now going to Las Vegas. So Jimmy G, you know, he's on the move. So what do the 49ers do? They turn around and they sign former USC quarterback Sam Darnold. So it looks like Sam Darnold, Patrick, he might be the starting quarterback for the 49ers when the season opens because of injuries. What a wild ride (laughs) it has been for Sam Darnold. I mean, look how high he was in the draft to this. It's unbelievable. Believable. You're, you're right. You never know, man. You're telling me he could possibly back up Brock Purdy? Yeah. Or even start wow. the year, you know, depending on what, you know, Trey Lance and Brock Purdy, how they're feeling and what their injuries are doing. He might be the starter, you know, that first game of the season. But they say he's still pretty good, that the Jets tried to ruin him when he was in New York. Uh, right. But he's still a decent quarterback. So I bet, I guess we're going to find out because he might be QB1 when the 49ers kick off the season. And then Jimmy G goes to Vegas and McDaniels. Wow. Yeah, he, he's reuniting, right, with Josh McDaniels, former Patriot guys. And uh, you know what? I like Jimmy G, man. He's got some swagger. He wins football games. He might, you know, his numbers not, might not blow you off uh, off the charts, you know, with, you know, huge touchdowns and, you know, completion percentage and all those sorts of things. But he wins games. And is that what it's all about? Isn't it, Patrick? You win games. Super Bowl experience, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Don't forget about that. So that was big quarterback news. The other big running back news, just real quick. Shout out to our guy, Jamal Williams, the pride of Summit High School in Fontana. Remember, he set that franchise record for the Detroit Lions with 17 rushing touchdowns. He went over 1,000 rushing yards on the season, signing a three-year deal to join Derek Carr in New Orleans. He's a saint. Wow, man. That does kind of make sense, though, when you think about it. Uh, with whatever's going on with Kamara, I don't mm-hmm. know if he's in trouble or he isn't in trouble, <laughs> but that's quite a one-two punch there. Yeah. And Jamal has shown that he's a great two-punch dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He can be the premier back. He can be the you know the sidekick. He can catch the ball. He can run the ball. He'll fit in every, any role that New Orleans needs him. He will fit into that role. Plus, he's just so funny, man. He's he's right. he's uh, you know social media gold. <laughs> And we know he's good for the locker room. He's a good teammate. Yes, absolutely. And finally, Patrick, World Baseball Classic. It was close last night, uh, but Team USA did pull out a 3-2 win against Columbia. Our boy Mike Trout, the pride of the Angels, knocking in all three runs for the Stars and Stripes as they they advance now to the quarterfinals to take on Venezuela. I'll tell you what, I looked at the Venezuelan lineup. They're stacked, man. Major League Baseball guys up and down the batting order. So that is not an easy game in the quarterfinals for the U.S. No, so here we go. You're right. These teams are so good from these other countries. We have heard of a couple nightmare situations that we were talking about from the World Baseball Classic, and that is players getting injured, like Edwin Diaz celebrating Puerto Rico's win over the Dominican Republic, and he ends up leaving the field in a wheelchair. Ultimate nightmare. Yeah, that's what you don't want. Obviously, these guys want to win. They want to represent their countries. It is a huge honor. But the last thing you want to do is get hurt right before the start of the season. So it's a liability to these Major League Baseball teams to allow these players to go out and do this. But how do you say no, man? This is this is a big deal. It's a huge honor. You just don't want to see this happen. And it's already happened a couple times, including Freddie Freeman of, of the Dodgers playing for Team Canada. He got a little banged up as well. So you just kind of, you know, hold your breath when these guys take the field. So good luck to the U.S. team. Let's hope that they don't get injured and they hope they win this whole damn thing. Am I right? We'll have the update. For sure <laughs> That's the two things, Monday. right? Don't get hurt and win. Those two things right there. Dude, just pull those two things off. We will catch up with you on Monday. Pep, tell me how to get your stop. Get my stuff on Inland Sports, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram. we get got the Inland Sports YouTube channel. Enjoy the madness, everybody. Thanks, Pep.